Chris Dill. I'm an intake specialist at the Veterans Leadership Program in Western Pennsylvania. Um, here we assist veterans with uh, prevention of homelessness, uh, utilities, utilities when uh, the weather gets cold. We have a lot of people coming in, uh, you know, behind on our bills. Uh, they need heat, you know, and they, they need to keep warm. We assist people with employment. Uh, you know, give them leads to uh, jobs, uh, assist with clothing for for those uh, interviews for people who may not have the uh, attire or anything, you know, to to present ourselves well at an interview. Um, a lot of other things we do on a side that may not be advertised, you know, we help families get appliances, you know, we had a mother come in, two young children, no stove in a home, uh, been without one for a few months, so we helped her get one of those. So we do a lot of things to, to help vets uh, get through whatever problem that we may be able to assist with. So. A lot of it is with employment, uh, because a lot of them, you know, were combat related, uh, so they have some mental health issues, you know, such as PTSD, uh, anxiety, things like that, that they may not be able to transition directly into a civilian job or anything like that. Um, so we actually do help them with that issue as well. We have counselors who come here and meet with them. But that's one of the challenges because you figure they also need a lot of medical care and attention. So when they come see civilian employers who may not understand what they went through, you know, they just kind of look at them as they may be a problem uh, or we can't deal with that type of issue. So employment is definitely one of the big things for, for some of the people. And a lot of them come out with degrees because they went to school while they were in. Uh, but it's just the, the extra issues that they had from, you know, being in combat or being deployed uh, that may affect them as far as on the civilian side. Because we have a lot of civilian employers who really don't understand, you know, the vet experience. Um, as far as um, housing, too, that's another thing. They, a lot of them come home, family members are deceased, uh, no one in the area. Some may just come to a completely new state and they have no one. You know, they don't know what their their options are. They don't know what benefits they're entitled to at the VA. So a lot of the times we have to direct them to them just to get the basic services that they're already entitled to because it's just really a lack of knowing. You know, I've spoken to many of vets who literally tell me, I didn't know that I can do that. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah, these services are here. So mainly I would say employment, um, housing, some of the time because some people do have family some people just may stay with a family member but mainly it's the employment thing because they have mental health issues and things like that and it's a lot harder to find an employer you know who may be able to accommodate that or work with them you know what i mean so that's somewhat of a challenge for us so. my story was when i joined the military i didn't know what i wanted to do in college uh, i wasn't even sure if i wanted to go to college but i knew i didn't want to sit around and not do anything my father was also a Marine. Uh, my grandfather was 82nd Airborne, uncle actually 82nd Airborne also too. So I made the choice to join the Marines because I wanted to be a Marine. If I said, if I'm gonna go into the military, I wanna become one of the best. You know, that's what my dad always told me, you know, the Marines are the best and growing up, I'm just more biased towards being a Marine. Uh, when I was in, I did a, actually had two jobs. I was a personnel chief um, at VMR-1. It's basically our search and rescue squadron and also uh, we flew the Commandant of the Marine Corps around. Like how the President has Air Force One, the Commandant has his own plane and it was at our hangar, our squadron. Uh, he flew with us every time. My second job when I went to my next duty station I was in headquarters and headquarters squadron. I worked in a vault and basically classified material control chief, uh, secret clearances, uh, handled secret documents, uh, things like that. Um, I wouldn't say it was very, very exciting, but it kind of was, you know what I mean? Just to get into my office, I had to punch in codes and turn this and do that. I literally worked inside of a vault. And once you get in, like there's like a little window where people would come to if they had to check in materials and the file. No one's allowed in. I'm not allowed out until, you know, I'm done with what I'm doing. So um, I did a few things and also had the opportunity to work on getting my air crew wings because one of the units that I was in, VMR-1, that was at the time the only unit in the Marine Corps where you can be like an administrative or any other MOS besides for naval air crew and also get your naval air crew wings. So I thought that was cool. So I used to get a lot of uh, time on the uh, HH 46Ds, uh, water rescue uh, exercises, things like that, just to help out while working towards. Now I never fully got them yet. 
because I got, you know, new orders to a different unit. But just the experience in itself was just, you know, fun. I mean, I got to do things that most people would never be able to do. So um, it was a pretty good time. So. Uh, my transition out was kind of difficult at first. Uh, same thing with me. Employment was kind of hard to find. Uh, I stayed on unemployment, you know, for a few months while I put out my resume, things like that. And what I faced was, like I said, a lot of civilian employers, they don't know how to translate your skills or, you know, what you did over to, you know, civilian life. You know, what is this? That's all the questions I always, well, what does this mean? Well, what does that mean? And you would have to explain to them. And it's like by the end of the interview, they're lost. You know, it's like, well, I don't know what he can or cannot do. So it was kind of rough. Um, collected unemployment for a while. And then I ended up getting a job for a health insurance company. Uh, worked there for a few years, went back to school, uh, got my visual communications degree. Um, but, I mean, it was just something like as a, a job just to take, you know what I mean? Uh, to take care of my family, things like that. But when I, I went out, my, my main thing was to try to find employment and that kind of was difficult for me too. So, but I, luckily I had a family support system there, you know, that kind of helped me out and helped me make the transition myself, so. Good, and you found yourself here. Yeah, exactly, exactly, I ended up here. Um, now here, I, I only, I'm fairly new, been here about three months. Um, and I got this recommendation through my veterans coordinator out at CCAC. Uh, he sent me an email, you know, let me know what the job description was, because I was working for the Department of Labor and Industry doing intake. and. You know, we talked, I interviewed, I spoke with Jesse. Uh, he said, you know, you may be a fit for another position because I had originally interviewed for a different position here. And, you know, we talked and he said, as soon as there's an opening, you know, I'll call you back. And sure enough, he did. And here I am. So, um, Basically, first of all, you should go to the website, neverforgetvets.org. Um, donations. You know, people can volunteer. We, we do different events throughout the year. Uh, Jill, she, she knows about all of that stuff. But donations, uh, making people aware, you know, that we even exist. You know, if, if you know a vet or have a family member or something like that, you know, just pass the word. You know, let them know that we are here to help. Um, you know, we, we take donations as far as uh, hats, clothing. You know, any items that you know that a family can use, um, we deal with vets, but the same thing when you're dealing with regular homeless people, things of that nature, you know, household supplies, uh, money's always good, you know, um, and, and time. Toys. Toys. Yeah, we, we do toys uh, for the homeless veteran children. Uh, we have a Christmas party coming up, too, and uh, they're going to get a lot of toys. We did pretty good this year. So, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, anything that you know that a, a family that may be in need can use, you know, the basic necessities, uh, we can always use that stuff here because we're always helping people with that type of stuff. So, um, like I said, or different events, uh, people just to volunteer their time, you know, because sometimes we're kind of stretched out and, you know, people are doing more than one thing at a time. And, you know, it's, it's always a big help to, to get somebody to kind of ease that burden on you, you know what I mean? So. Oh, people can contact us at neverforgetvets.org. Uh, they can also call in. You know, our number is 412-481-8200. Um, but those are the two main ways. Uh, we have people who do outreach, like myself. I work out of Butler, uh, VA, once a week. Uh, we're looking on to expanding that to maybe to Washington and Greene County, but as of right now, not yet. Um, definitely, people at the, the VA hospitals, they know about us, so you can talk to your case manager, uh, anyone that you work with there, doctors, uh, they can point you in the right direction to get our information. Uh, but as far as all of the veteran organiz organizations, excuse me, <laughs> they know how to get in touch with us. But the main way is either call or visit the website and that will give you the rest of the information.